Hello, this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is a video on Corsair's Dominator Titanium 1st Edition DDR5 RAM. This is a premium DDR5 kit, which promises up to 7,200 mega transfers per second as standard, although there are other variants. As you'll see, this is a 1st Edition kit, which means it's a limited edition, also meticulously crafted and carefully designed to the highest possible standards. This little kit is also pretty interesting because it comes with its own little screwdriver set and swappable design. So you've seen some RGB lighting on it in the NZXT H6 Flow RGB, as you saw a second ago. But you'll also notice that inside the box, it comes with some heat sinks, so you can swap it out for better cooling if you're not into the RGB, or if you just want to change things around. And I'm going to be doing some overclocking and tweaking to maybe improve the performance further. More on that later on, because it is as simple as turning on XMP or tweaking some other things at BIOS level to adjust the performance and get better performance out of it. But I want to show you the setup process for it, talk about what you've got included there and some of the highlights of it, as well as showing it in both variations with the RGB and with these heat sinks on there. One of the other things I really liked this kit is that it comes with a nifty little screwdriver, which is also pretty good quality and probably will replace my iFixit screwdriver in some instances. Now, this is fairly chunky RAM. I want to state that out of the box. You'll see it in a second. It's pretty tall, so it wouldn't be ideal for a smaller system in a compact case. It sits well in a mid tower or large case, but I wouldn't want to try and put this in an ITX build because it does sit pretty high. The other interesting thing about this design is you can potentially 3D print your own bits to go on top. So instead of having the heat sink at the top, you could potentially 3D print something up there, make that pretty interesting. You'll also notice that this is labeled up. So in each, the individual kits are actually numbered because it's a limited edition run. So that's pretty interesting. This is 135. And here you're seeing two sticks of 16 gigabytes in the 32 gigabyte kit with a CAS latency of 34 or CL34. But you can also get it in variations with 48 gigabyte kit, which is two sticks of 24 or 64 gigabytes of two sticks of 32. More details in the description as well as the specs. Now I want to show you outside the case what it looks like from various angles because you can see just how chunky it is and just how tall. I think you're definitely getting a nice quality build here with the Dominator RAM. Of course there's Dominator RAM has always been really nice and this one is no exception. Obviously you do need to make sure you've got a motherboard that supports DDR5 and one that will support RAM that goes up to this speed. This is the Azu Strix Z790 Gaming Wi-Fi 2, and this one actually supports RAM up to 8,000 mega transfers a second. Other motherboards might not support the same speed. You do need to check the compatibility and also make sure you're using XMP, which we'll get to in a little while, and probably update the BIOS. More on that in a little while as well. I didn't have to update the BIOS for this though, so even straight out of the box, it did work with this. Now, obviously the RGB lighting is controllable via Corsair's IQ software, and it does look pretty nice. As you can see, you've got the RGB lighting on the top, and then you've got some strips essentially which give you a view inside of it. So if you like the RGB, then this is the look that you could get. Again, this is the H6 Flow RGB from NZXT, but you'll see it in a second in the other variations with the heat sinks, because I'll show that off too. Another thing here is obviously I'm using an all-in-one CPU cooler. You may want to think about the height of the RAM if you're opting for a tower cooler instead, because it'll definitely interfere with some of the other CPU air coolers out there. So something to keep in mind. But you've got some nice RGB lighting and a powerful, fast DDR5 kit. Also, I would recommend using two sticks. Much more stable than four, in my experience, with DDR5 and with XMP. Now, the process for swapping out the RGB lighting on the top for the heat sinks is fairly straightforward. You obviously got that little screwdriver. There's some screws down the top there that you just need to undo, and then you can just pull it out. I'll link in the description to the other info you need on this, because if you're curious, as I said, you can create your own 3D prints potentially on here. But the idea here is if you are going to be doing some overclocking, tweaking the RAM, you can swap it out with this heat shielding instead, which is really simple to install. 
Obviously, you lose the RGB, but you do potentially improve the cooling performance. Of course, there are claims you can knock a few degrees off the RAM with these, so it may be worth considering. And the process is just you've got some nice cooling pads on there, remove the stickers, put the copper plate in place instead, slip this bit over the top, and then reseat it all and screw the screws back in. Nice and easy in order to do this. And it's nice to have the option to switch between these because obviously you get a choice of the design experience and the end result. I have been using the RAM in actually a couple of different systems because I wanted to test out what it would be like. So I've used it on two different motherboards and in two different builds. So you'll see more on that in a minute. And I've found it's really stable and I'm not having any problems. You can obviously test the RAM stability as well and there are some tools for doing that in the form of a Memtest 86 for example which on this motherboard you should easily be able to access. I'll leave links in the description to that as well as another video I've done on things to know about DDR5 RAM but the installation process for both motherboards is install it in the second and fourth slot so that's A2 and B2 so you need to make sure it's connected in the right place and fully seated to ensure good performance naturally and then basically just going about installing it so this is in the Lian Li 011 Vision which is another case I've done a video on recently and interesting build again a larger case with a good view into it good cooling and again another all-in-one cooler there so it's not interfering with the RAM but you can see there's good clearance on there with the tubes on the right hand side as well so no problems there. Slightly different look, obviously. I've still got a lot of RGB in here, but now the RAM doesn't have it. But the benefit of this actually is in some systems, the way you position your cooler may impact the RAM view anyway, because you might find your tubes are blocking the view of the RAM. So if you're not using the RGB and using these heat sinks instead, then you have that benefit of not having to worry about that. So here you can see it in the Evo XL, for example, alongside the O11 Vision. So I'm just giving you a different view of it. Now, with that RAM installed, obviously we need to make sure we go into the BIOS and activate XMP, otherwise you're not gonna get maximum speeds. As default, it won't be running at the top speed and it is pretty straightforward to do that. So just hit delete, go into your BIOS and on this motherboard, XMP is on the left-hand side. So we just need to go in there and enable it. And then that automatically sets it. Now I noticed immediately, that this is actually putting it to 7,400 mega transfers per second instead of the 7,200 that it's defaulting to. So with some basic overclocking, you may be able to get more out of it really simply. I mean, I've just done it by turning on XMP on, but you can also potentially go in and tweak some more as well if you want to with the extreme tweaking settings. And this is gonna vary from motherboard to motherboard. So that's worth keeping in mind. So once that's done, just save changes and reset. Now we're in Windows, we can use a couple of different tools to make sure everything's working properly. So this is Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility, which you can download and overclock things, but it'll also show you system performance. So you can see the RAM is set to 7,400 mega transfers a second. CPU Z will also show you this info under the memory section. See the current frequency is 3,700 megahertz, but that's obviously doubled by XMP up to 7,400. And then you also see the CAS latencies listed there as 34 clocks as well. Now, before all this, it is important to check that your motherboard will work with the RAM and that maybe the system's going to perform properly. So, for example, checking this motherboard, the BIOS updates, the more recent BIOS updates actually lists a improvement in memory module compatibility and system performance. Often I've found other BIOS updates will list things like memory module compatibility and stability as well. So it is worth checking for a BIOS update, but also making sure the motherboard will work before you purchase it. So this ROG Strix Gaming A Wi-Fi 2, as I've said, supports up to 8,000 mega transfers per second as the top speed, but you can also go in and tweak things. So you'll see there's dim flex capability, which is overclocking with the BIOS and AI tweaking. So you can adjust even more and get some more gains out of it. If you're spending a lot of money on your RAM, it's worth playing around with this. And then AEMP2, which is enhanced memory profiles, is also available under the Extreme Tweaker. So each 
motherboard may offer things like this as well that are worth looking at. This motherboard has Memtest 86 as an option in the BIOS. You can click to use this to test the RAM and make sure it's working as expected and can handle load. You can get this as a free download which you can use on other motherboards so I'll leave a link in the description to find out more about this. But it runs a series of tests that do take a long time so keep this in mind but it is worth doing because it will check that the RAM is working as expected and obviously with expensive RAM kits like this you want to make sure both stick are working properly. This test took over four hours to complete in total, but once it's done, you can see it passed completely. Both RAM sticks running as expected, and I should be getting some pretty superb performance out of this. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Check out links in the description to other related videos you might find useful. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend, you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.